Studies show that 71% of kids who drop out of high school are fatherless. And 85% of incarcerated youth don't have a father in their lives. It was right around this area where Rick Croft was swarmed by police while driving down the road. They were looking for a man who shot at another officer. The only problem is now police are saying the shooting never happened. As you can see behind me, there are hundreds of protesters who have gathered at the Mahoning County Jail. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but they're standing on the walls and they're chanting, no justice, no peace. He was strangled with his underwear and then set on fire before being left for dead. Four hours later, his father and brother-in-law found him in a wooded area behind a supermarket. I learned how that remarkable woman is tying her success here in Youngstown to her roots in Puerto Rico. Wilson said he was on this side of the fence walking his dog when his neighbor came out yelling at him to get off of his property and yelling racial slurs. Like you said before, this is not um, to take away from washing your hands. You still need to wash your hands. If you take a look at all of this open space behind me here, this is on the corner of Route 224 and 551. It was at this home on February 29th where Sierra and Leroy Morris were shot and killed in what police are calling a domestic dispute. Now her family is trying to cope with the loss of their loved ones. She didn't deserve. Yeah, she she really didn't deserve this. And I mean, just the cowardly act. Sierra's mother Donna was at the home at the time of the shooting. She did not wish to go on camera, but she did describe to us the moments her daughter and husband's lives were taken. She said she was in her bedroom when she heard Sierra arguing with a man in the living room. Then she heard gunshots. In an attempt to protect his daughter, Leroy rushed to the living room where he was shot three times in the chest. But it didn't end there. The gunshots continued. In the midst of gunfire, Donna rushed into the living room and grabbed her five-year-old granddaughter, who she says was sitting on the couch yelling, my dad is shooting my mom. Donna took her to the bedroom and locked the door. Sierra was shot more than 17 times. Uh, even after 17 shots? She still was alive. Sierra fought for her life, making it from the living room to the kitchen, then to a stairwell where she would lay until paramedics arrived. I had to stand out there and I had to watch them, you know, get dragged out on a stretcher. Cody was on his way home from the gym when he pulled up to find police and ambulances outside his home. She re recognized who I was and tried to reach out to me, try to put her hand out. Sierra and Leroy were taken to St. Elizabeth Hospital where they both died as a result of their injuries. 30-year-old John Brenner III, the father of Sierra's daughter, has been arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated murder. Reporting for WKBN 27 First News, Jennifer Rodriguez. In 2019, 39 kids in Youngstown lost a parent to violence. Those 39 kids will now grow up without a mom or a dad, likely facing greater challenges in life. I spoke to one woman today who says her family has not been the same since a tragic day last August. And I just hate that he's not here to watch our daughter grow up, his other kids grow up. Anthony Bowers was found August 18th with a gunshot wound on the south side of Youngstown. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Now his three children are left without a dad. The first week that he passed, she wouldn't sleep, she wouldn't eat. Like, you could definitely, you knew that she understood something was wrong. Tamara and Anthony had one daughter together, now one-year-old Maria. But Anthony also had two other children and was a stepfather to Tamara's other two daughters. She doesn't understand she's only six. And then Maria, she doesn't understand. And the only way that I can make sure he stays alive and her life is showing her pictures and videos. Some kids are really small and they don't understand, but even without understanding, it still affects them long, long term. Currently, Youngstown is the leading Ohio city in child poverty rates. Bernie says there are links between poverty, violence, and trauma. Poverty in itself causes a lot of issues. Uh, poverty is uh, t uh, attached to unemployment. Unemployment then is attached to how do I survive and now maybe I look at something illegal to do to survive, right? And now that's attached to the, the system. And now I'm, I'm attached to that system. And now if I go away, it affects my children. It's a, it's a crazy cycle. Paris said she hopes people will stop and think about the effects of their choices before acting in a violent way. Look at the big picture. Um, because it doesn't just affect the person that 
is being affected. It affects their family, friends, and loved ones, you know. Um, like, my daughter has to go through life without her father, you know, due to violence, and it's just, it's not fair. Reporting for WKBN 27 First News, Jennifer Rodriguez. Music is something that can be found in every culture. There are different types with different rhythms and dances. Here in the Valley, one band has been using music to celebrate the Hispanic culture for decades. Um, we try to do a little bit of everything. Felipe and Mary Gonzalez have had their band Conjunto Requeña for 43 years. It started out as a family band and grew to much more. Started practicing with the kids and we taught them the songs and I had to learn how to play the maraca and the guido. I didn't know how to do any of that. <laughs> Now there are about seven members of the group, but at times members play as a trio or a quartet. Mary said over the years there has been as many as 22 members at one time. One of the gigs Conjuto Requeña does is a traditional paranda. In a paranda, it is tradition for a small group of musicians to go house to house. The homeowners invite them in and they play music. When we go to the house, we usually uh, we're done at the first house and we invite the uh, the family to join us. Following tradition, the band also uses a cuatro, which is a traditional Hispanic instrument. Singer Rosie Rodriguez has been in the group on and off for 40 years. It's good to keep up the culture, you know, people forget about what it was like back in the day. So with our music, we bring it back. Mary and Felipe said they plan to continue the group for as many years as they can. Reporting for WKBN 27 First News Online, Jennifer Rodriguez.